I'm Beverly Roberts, Emotional Health Coach, and I help professionals get past overwhelm, procrastination and self-sabotage. I really am passionate about helping people connect to their compelling vision of their future. I say update your CV being your compelling vision. And when we do that, so often we, we find ourselves in a bit of fear and panic and we dreamed big and we don't feel like we're getting there. And we're taking the steps towards it. We've got all many demands on us coming into to our, you know, our every day. And that can build into stress. But over time, if we don't deal with the stress, which Jin is very you know, well able to do that with us, with her, um, how to empty your stress buckets. So she's got lots of information about that. What I am more about is about our emotions and our thoughts that and our thinking behind what's going on and how we calm the body, which I'm sure Jin does that as well but to calm the body so that we can get our thinking brain back online. So today I'm going to talk about overwhelm and self-doubt because they are quite closely related. So I've got a slideshow and I shall just talk through that. As was mentioned, if you just want to put your any questions in the chat, I'll get to them afterwards because I, I don't think I'll be able to see them moving forward. So let me just put this right. Overcoming overwhelm and self-doubt. I say beyond the statistics. Last year, the Health and Safety Executive, Executive reported that over 800,000 workers had self-reported suffering from work-related stress, depression, and anxiety. And that was more than double pre-pandemic times, which you know I'm sure doesn't surprise us. It's just, it's a huge number of people who've self-reported that they're suffering in that way. This year, the Mental Health Organization released another report and they, they stated that mental health problems cost the UK 118 billion per year, stating that much of this is preventable. And to put that in perspective, they also said that the budget within the NHS in England was 150 billion. So the cost that's going out on mental health problems is huge. In Scotland, the figure was 8.8 .8 billion. So when I say beyond the statistics, what I'm very aware of is that they're just the people who are known about. They're the people who've stepped up or, you know, gone into crisis and they're being attended to in some way. What really, what I'm very aware of and what's prevalent to me is that there are people like us who are in small business. We're not hitting anybody's statistical analysis. We're, you know, doing our, our business and we're often we're the only one doing it. So we've got all aspects coming at, at us and, uh, you know, family life and, and all sorts which is true of everybody, but I think the figures are really to do with, with those who are accounted for. And we need to remember, you know, the, the problem is a lot vaster than that. And what I'm passionate about is helping people to really learn how to manage their emotions and take control of what's important to them. So I don't know if this is true for you, but I know there's been times in my life when it's not just been spinning plates, but it's my my plates have been spinning plates. Everything was just going on. You don't know which way to turn. There's all these demands coming at you and it just feels crazy. Overwhelm is when we've in that scrambled frenetic and spinning energy. So we know we're in overwhelm when we've, we just feel it. We know what overwhelm feels like. It's like, I, I just don't know which way to turn. I can't go on. There are many factors of it you know, finances, work, health, life, family, got to love them, but sometimes they add to it all. Um, but what overwhelm, when we feel overwhelmed and we start to freeze, maybe, or we feel stuck in, or in this spinning energy, that's when stress has gone on for too long and it hasn't been attended to. If that's not attended to soon and we don't step back and we assess what's going on, and we keep on doing what we've been doing, which is maybe the overworking, the trying to be all things to all people, we can burn out. And burnout is that mental, emotional, physical is exhaustion when we haven't been successful in managing the stress. I know from my own experience of going from stress to overwhelm to burnout, I, I made a decision to overwork. I made a decision to throw 60 hour weeks at a job that was never going to be achievable. And I just overworked the point where I burned out and for myself what happened was my brain froze it was like I literally it felt like mental arrest and I lost the capacity to think it scared me immensely and that's that's the point at which I called the doctor and said I've got this thing going on it's like my brain's just stopped working and she said you're embodying your stress and I'm like I'm doing what 
And it was just that phrase alone that froze me. I was like, I am not doing this anymore. So I, I shifted my whole job. That ended, you know, pretty much soon afterwards. I'm not doing that to myself. And that's what I want to encourage to people is that we don't continue to spin in this energy of overwhelm, because if we do and we don't adapt to it and make changes, learn how to manage our emotions and to clear out all the stuff that's holding us back, burnout's the trajectory. So we need to take control. So I'm going to talk a bit about that today. So there's that. So that would be a slow groove, like a slow burn stress into overwhelm to burnout that I had. There's another kind that can happen, which is a sudden impact. And that can be when something significant happens that basically spins you off your axis. And no coincidence is that I put my hand up and said, hey, yeah, I'll do a talk, I'll overwhelm. I got into a week of overwhelm very much soon after that, whereby this whole online presence stuff is new to me. I'm glad to have met some people at the network today who can maybe help with that. But it, it's a new space to present to a group to be digital and do things like that. So I set up a safe space with two people and I said, I want to practice all my training in here. I want to share with you, you know, some of the stuff I do so that I've practiced it before I put it out there and make it public. And this is where Lifting Life Higher was. Lifting Life Higher is a membership site I have in mind to bring this work to more people at a low cost. It's my passion. It's my dream. And so unbeknown to me, overnight, one of those two people added the 30 more people to the group. Completely freaked me out. And I'm like, I'm not ready for this. And my overwhelm was sudden. I got a migraine. It was so profound. I'm like, whoa. But because of my training and emotions, I was able to step back from it. And I was a... a I allowed myself, I gifted myself to be an observer of what was going on. And I have to say, it wasn't easy. It wasn't quick. It took about a week. But what I realized was I wasn't actually ready for this bigger vision that I had. I had some steps to put in place. And being an observer of my emotions and all that was going on and all the work that I've done with one-to-one -one people where I help them calm down to, you know, see clearly. I was like, what's the mess in my message here? Oh, sorry, it was the other way around. What's the message in my mess? And the message was, I was running too far too soon. Now, this is a repeating pattern for me. I caught it this time and I went, stop. Just put that on hold. Doesn't mean it's stopping and it's ending. What do I want to do? And that's why I've rebranded as an emotional health coach. It's that passion. It's that burnout. It's that point of you know, procrastinating, not taking actions in the right direction. That's what I want to help people with. So there are all sorts of ways that we can activate overwhelm and the way that it makes us. What The things I want to point out is, most of all, it makes us less resourceful. If we're in that fog thinking and we're spinning energy, we're not making great decisions. We're not resetting. We're, we're not being active. So I thought over here, over busy yet unproductive. You're not actually taking, taking the right um actions sleep disturb disturbance again jen's mentioned that that's her speciality if your sleep's disturbed through all the busyness of your work in your day then there's something serious going on that needs attending to if you can't switch your thoughts off at night which was my number one thing it's like my job where i was overworking was on my mind 24 7 i sacrificed family and friends for it i was busy i've just got to do a bit more i'll get ahead it wasn't going to happen ever and you know, at the end, it was the detriment of my health. And I say, please, people don't do that. It's not worth it. We need to reset. So I want to take you on a little journey. So I want you just for a moment. I know that everyone's in station stationary. So no driving cars when you're doing things like this, but close your eyes for a moment and take a breath in. And let go. And I want you to imagine that you're driving a car and it's a really dark road. You're going up a mountainside. It's a bumpy track, it's raining, it's pouring, the thunderclouds are rolling in and you've got to drive and get to the top of the mountain in the next half hour. And the, the water's running down the road and you're aware of the cliff edge on the other side. Just, if you're not a driver, be a passenger, but imagine yourself going up this road. And what does it feel like? What do you feel like as you've got your hands on the wheel and there's this storm going on around you? There's drops to the edge. You can't see through the windscreen wipers. The rain's happening so hard. The vision's not obscured. How do you feel in your body? I just want you to be aware of that. Typically what people say is they feel contracted. They feel like they're closed in. They feel like progress is slow. They feel like they, you know, the journey feels too much or it's not safe. 
that's what happens you know when we look in the dark road of things so again i just invite you just to take a breath in we'll just shake that off just move your shoulders so that was just a, a, a brief experience and i want you to, to give you another brief experience on a light road so this time back in the car being the driver the passenger and i want you to see this long straight stretch of road ahead of you the sky is blue, the sun is shining. Maybe your car has got an open roof. You are feeling really good. You're on your way to see people that you love spending time with and you know you're going to have a great day. And you're traveling along, got your favorite tunes on the radio. And how do you feel? How do you feel when you move into that energy and that focus and that space? It's very different, isn't it? It's a lighter energy, it's a brighter energy. You've tapped into your joy and your, your desire for something better at the end. You know you're on your way to something that feels good. So I just want you to notice how that feels in your body, those two different states. And then just opening your eyes and just shaking that off as well. So what's going on here emotionally? In that very brief exercise, what I did was I just took you into two different emotional states. And one felt really good, forward, progressive, expansive, and the other felt contracted and immobilizing. And so if we look at overwhelm, which sits here, so this is the emotional guidance scale based on the work of Abraham Hicks. It's a really good one for moving up and down our, excuse me, <clears throat> our thoughts and how we feel. One of the things that people that's discussed is which comes first, the thought or the feeling. And it's a bit chicken and egg. And I say, it really doesn't matter. We can affect both. We can affect how we feel by doing things, different things, or by thinking different things with our thoughts. We can you know, shift our thinking into you know, the pessimism, how things are not working out, or we can go, you know what? I've actually learned a lot here and I can move things forward. I can make different choices. So the, this emotional scale is a really powerful thing to know and understand. So when we look at self-doubt, self-doubt brings our thinking down here into these lower spaces, insecurity, unworthiness. When we're doubting ourselves, we're contracting that energy. It's like being on the dark road. It's moving forward in the storm and it's not easy. So with my work, what I do is I help people to just readjust to that, to, to, to dig deep and see what's going on underneath it. And one of the things that's come to my recent awareness is how profoundly our relationship with money affects how we think and feel and operate in the world. There's a really interesting connection to our relationship to money as to how we show up. So if we're doubting ourselves, do we have somewhere in, in back in time a thought or an experience or you know in within the realms of our upbringing that we don't deserve to be earning that amount of much money. That's for other people. That's not for us. Or, you know, success isn't for our family. That's what other people do. And for many of we who are self-employed, we have this burning desire to do our work in the world. We have a burning desire to really step up and, and make a difference and to, you know, carve our own path. And that's what I, I love supporting people with. But when we get overwhelmed, when all of that becomes too stressful, we want to learn how to calm it down and to bring it back back to basics the quickest way we can do that is with breathing and deep slow breathing that's the quickest way because what we're doing when we breathe slowly is we are going into calming the nervous system we're switching from having you know all the adrenaline's running to being the parasympathetic nervous system that's calming our bodies it's calming our mind it lets us think straight again so, you know, we always want to be looking at how can we do that. Category one, two, and three. So the other thing I'll say about emotions that's really important is that if we consider them as feedback, feedback that things are going right, feedback that we need to adjust our thinking, feedback that we need to give a different action, feedback that if we've been trying something for a long time and we're getting that overwhelm, there's a message there that says, stop, take a look at this, what needs to shift and what needs to change. We get early signs, category one, one kind of storms and emotions we get the small subtle signs first if we don't listen to them they get bigger the stress builds we find ourselves you know into that space of overworking or maybe we freeze fight flight or freeze my one is freeze often I freeze procrastination comes in there don't know where to start so so you don't 
And then if there's the all blown out, it's gone too far. We can change all of that. We need to change the state, much like we did with light road, dark road, change our thinking, change our focus. And so, you know, this is a quick whistle stop tour through this because, you know, we, we do have this, you know, short time to share. But, you know, what can we actually do about that? So I'll explain a bit more about that. I'm all about taking control, taking back your emotional control, taking back your thinking. And so we're looking at the early onset of overwhelm, which is paying attention to those early signs. If you've got too much on your plate and it's feeling like it's taking over and it's building and you can sense that happening, do a mind dump. It's one of the best tools you can do to shift your head is to get out of your head and onto paper. It's amazing how liberating that is. Once you've got it on paper, you can see it objectively and you can look at, okay, what belongs to me? What belongs to somebody else? What is for now and what is for later? And what's actually a waste of time? We can clear out those waste of time things. We get, we get more time available. If overwhelm is taking over, I'd like you to remember it's temporary. It doesn't have to persist. We can really shift and change it. Another thing, um, Jen said, sleep is a great one. It's like, if you can take a nap, no, we can't do that in the workplace or when we're you know, on the way between clients or something. But you know, good night's sleep, just setting it aside, stopping. Um, look at all the components. Look at all the things that are on your plate, the things that are to do. Are they all yours? Do you need some help? can you delegate somewhere what needs to change so we want to be strategic in our thinking so that we know how to manage it better so we don't go into burnout the other thing what will happen is we get we get on the roller the emotional roller coaster and we'll dip in and dip out of this it's better to deal with the things that are creating the the dips so that they don't dip either so deep or they, that dip doesn't last so long as you know we've discussed earlier it's like these things will happen. No one's immune from this, but we need to know what to do to manage it when we when it occurs. And then immobilization is when the overwhelm's taken over. It, it's it's got the upper hand. It's got you freezing, spinning in circles. And we whatever you do, find some ways to to release that stress. Go for a run if that's your thing. Um, go for a walk. Nature is amazing. There's just something really healing about being in nature. Just get out there. Go for a walk. We need to get. The, the off the things our thoughts off the things that are are bearing down upon us and connect to something that feels good maybe it's you know watching some movies maybe it's a hobby that you haven't done for a long time that's been sidelined because you've been too busy do something that is passionate that feels good to you and that helps you clear the mind so that you can strategize a better way forward we're always looking to clear the stress clear the distress that that causes which is the emotional part, and to strengthen it up. So again, creating a compelling vision of your future is a really powerful thing to do. Because when you do that, you know, either with or without me, if, if you've written down what your ideal future looks like, it's a beautiful thing to behold, because this is your desires and this is for you. So play with that. Maybe take some time out to do, you know what, if this was my ideal world and I wasn't feeling like this, this is what life would look like. Really build and develop that picture. And then you can look at, am I taking steps towards it? So for example, in my lifting life higher, I realized the rungs on my ladder were too far apart. I just couldn't get there. It's not my time. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's just not now. So again, just telling ourselves the truth is really helpful. So taking back control, which is what we're doing throughout all of those, those you know, stages of overwhelm. The other thing um, to bring self-doubt into this is, if we believed in ourselves fully, if we got our confidence up to speed with our dreams and goals, we wouldn't be so rocked out so much by all that was before us. We'd be clearer, we'd be focused, and we'd be more organized in what needs to happen. Um, the other thing I'm very aware of is, you know, from my own perspective, and I'm sure I don't just speak for myself, is that as a solopreneur, someone working on their own, I don't have a support team around me. It's me on my own. So all the stuff that comes in, it's for me. So build a network. Have, have some people that you can lean on coffee breaks in the workspace, because again, you know, family and friends, they maybe don't quite get what we're about. They don't understand our work and the pressures of it. People in business do. So that's where a network like the No Ties Network's great because it is just a real safe space of connection where you, you can just reach out and connect to people and, and share what's going, going on. Tia, and um, this is another, um part of training that I would do 
or can do, but it's it's basically it is our responsibility to take care of ourselves and our emotions and to get ourselves back online with our dreams and our vision when we go offline. So Tia is at the thoughts that we think. These are the three things that we always have full facility over, you know, unless there's some you know big detrimental reason for it not to be so, but the thoughts that we think, the images we hold in our head, like what is and isn't possible for us, and the actions or inactions we take. Because sometimes, if truth be told, I know this is true for myself, I am not taking the actions I know that will get me to the next level of success that I want, because there's a part of me that's been holding me back. So if we tell ourselves the truth, we're not being active in the right direction, or we're doing the busy work and not actually doing the thing that's hard. That's what can hold us back and create more, more overwhelm. So I hope that's been helpful to you. But know that with every thought, there is an opportunity to shift your perspective and to break through the emotional chains that are holding you back. That ability to make a better choice and a better decision, that's always with us. And we want to choose the one that serves our well-being because in, in the end, that strengthens us and who we are. If you sense this coming on, two minutes to breathe, to stop and to breathe deeply. Breathe out. Here's a tip for you for, for, for stress. Breathe out as far, far, far as you can. By default, you'll take a massive breath in. The body needs to be oxygenated. If you do that a few times, you're going to get more oxygen in your body, which allows your whole you know, system just to fire up and be more effective. So what I'll say is like, if you can't find two minutes in your day to stop and breathe, then you really need to do some considerations about what's going on because we should all be able to find two minutes to stop and just breathe. Okay, so... Hope that's been helpful to you all.